What would you say is a great piece of art? That's a question. Most people would put a painting like The Last Supper in that category, certainly. But how about this? A dead shark. Hmm. One thing even more eye-opening may be the price tag for some of that art, as business and economics correspondent Rebecca Jarvis found out. Always wondered how these prices were set, RJ. Absolutely. I did the same, Erica. Good morning. There are starving artists, and then there's Damien Hirst. He's made millions producing art that people want to buy, but what makes it art? And who determines the price? Well, the answer may surprise you. For $150, you could own a pet shark. So with all the sharks in the sea, how'd this one reel in $12 million? Art is one of the most expensive handmade things on the face of the earth. Got a little boy sitting on a cart. Art critic Jerry Salt says bad art can cost a lot of money if enough people want it. I think that about 85% of the art that I see is crap. The big shark is not great art, but what a sight that is. 20 years ago, British-born artist Damien Hirst paid $4,000 to have this 14-foot tiger shark caught off the coast of Australia, $2,500 to have it shipped on ice to his studio in the UK, and another $8,000 to have it stuffed and suspended in a tank of formaldehyde. Hearst called his creation the impossibility of death in the mind of someone living. I think a lot of people buy the art that a lot of other people buy. Maybe it's like the stocks, where you buy not with your eyes, but with your ears. Hearst has made a career and a fortune producing art that packs a punch and lots of it. He began painting spots in 1986. Today, there are over 1,500 spot paintings in existence, with price points in the millions. Well, I think he's inspired by... Curator Louise Neary says the more attention the spots get, the more valuable they become. It's really the investment of attention. You know, because if no one wanted to look at them, would they have any value? I think it's a very interesting question about the history of art, in fact. <laughs> Each year, over 8 million people flock to the Louvre Museum in Paris to see the Mona Lisa, Leonardo da Vinci's masterpiece painted over 500 years ago. The adage is, great art stands the test of time. London-based art expert Sarah Thornton says certain masterpieces At $30 million, $30 don't need a 10-digit price tag to be considered valuable. Million. Certain artists are established in art history, they've been well validated, they're in the collections of many different museums of modern art around the world. Then there are the artists who haven't yet survived the test of time and are making pay dirt anyway. Artists like Christopher Wool, whose fool painting recently fetched $7.7 .7 million at auction. There are certain people who would never dream of buying a painting for less than $10,000. That's what makes their collection more exclusive. And um, it is intriguing that that word, fool, would be so enticing to collectors at that level. In other words, it's not exactly art for art's sake. All right, here we go. You ready? But if art is indeed in the eye of the beholder, it's only a safe this investment if future generations family. agree. This is our next piece. Children confronted with an oversized kitchen appliance in the contemporary art wing at the Museum of Fine Arts Boston didn't seem to question whether what they were seeing was art. Why do you guys think the artist made a giant cheese grater? Maybe he didn't think of it as a cheese grater. Maybe he thought of it as like a piece of art. Yeah. But they had a lot more fun making their own. Pretty priceless stuff, depending, of course, who you ask. Thanks. <laughs> Even in a museum, when you go, I'll bet you you don't look at everything. You look at maybe 15% of what you see, and of that 15%, something, if you let it, will reach out and embed itself in you. When I watch this, it reminds me of the fact that Andy Warhol painted mm. Campbell's soup cans. That's yep. right. And that Damien Hirst sold his art to really a well-known and highly regarded collector named Charles Saatchi. Yes, and, and it's interesting you bring up that point because art 
gets some of its value from who owns it in the first place. Mm -hmm. And if somebody famous has owned a piece of art or if it's appeared in a museum, in most cases, that ups the value of the art. Just inherently, more people want it because it's associated with somebody famous in the first place. And they think if you're famous that you have good taste in art? Because I find art so intimidating. It is intimidating, and it's intimidating in part because the price tag on it. Because yes. these price tags, I mean, last year, the most expensive painting sold last year was a Cezanne for $250 million, yes. bought by the royal yeah. family of Qatar. A lot of people are buying art at very high prices now, and in particular from places like the Middle East. And there's also there's something I've never quite been able to, to, to grasp, but I understand why it's important. Some people have an eye. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. And you can't define what an eye is, but they know what's good. They know what's good, but some people in the art world will tell you that the dirty little secret about art is that what's good really is, is assessed by the subjective. price point. And it is very subjective, but the more it costs, the yeah. more some people will tell you it's well, good. It's Mega good. Millions is 361 sign. million. If we win that, we could buy all the art. <laughs> we want it. We want to buy all the art, but we got to go now. <laughs>